Are you tired of struggling to create great results with the digital backdrops? Let me show you how I approach it in a few easy steps. My name is Jade and I've been a professional photographer for over 15 years. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks on how to get it done easily. So hit the subscribe button and uh, I will be posting more tutorials. Oh, and make sure to join my Facebook group with over 10,000 photographers. So there's more tips and tricks and group only bonuses. Um, and all the digital backdrops featured in this tutorial can be found in our Etsy store. I will be posting the link in the description. So let's get started and elevate your photography game by utilizing these digital backdrops. Alright, let's get started. So if you are very new to compositing, so there's um, quite a few things I, I want to mention. Um, the easiest um, thing you can start with that would be the skinny backdrops so let's have a look but by, say, by, by saying that you can see uh, this image I will be using as the image um, to show you guys how to do it but keep in mind on the overall tones and the exposure and the, uh, the brightness so you can see if this one so this one is a quite dark backdrop if I want to add a let's just say a brighter one so it's going to be so much harder to blend uh, comparing to the darker tone so let's just drag this over okay let me just drag this over here let's have a quick look so you can see just by dropping it on top of the, the image you can just see the difference on the exposure is just really different so so what you want to do is uh, to make your life easier so you want to do maybe choose one of the darker ones say these uh, brown ones these gold ones and those would be so much easier to blend uh, i will also be showing you guys just um not these ones there's some other floral ones so these ones you can just tell by dragging it over here it's going to be easier to blend so that's step one make sure that you choose an image that's going to make sense um okay so what i do is um so i will try one of the floral ones and then i will try one of the uh the, the canvas ones so these ones these are converted from a real hand painted um, canvas backdrops so these are really pretty you can just see Let's just drag one of those over. So you can see there's still some creases at the bottom at the bottom bottom of the backdrop, so which make it even more realistic. Uh, so these are our real hand painted uh, canvases. So we converted into digital version. So okay, so let's get started on this. So let's just keep this. The other thing I want to mention is keep an eye you can see that's the reason why i chose this image you can see there is a real canvas uh, layered on top of another backdrop so the reason i chose this so you can visually see the the shadows the real shadows around the backdrop you can see like these little shadows and you can see the size of it you can see the how it falls onto the, the backdrop behind it so you can see now and keep in mind always keep in mind on your lighting uh, position and where you place your light for this one I had the um, I only have one light on the left side of the model so it's a quite big um, so it's 86 in inches umbrella so it's a quite big uh, umbrella and it's pointing down you can see it's really soft and beautiful so you can see that's why on the left side there's hardly any shadow so there's only a little bit of shadow on this side there's a bit more on this side so just keep in, um, just keep in mind where's your light and how they are falling onto the backdrop so once we drop this this digital uh, backdrop on on the uh, on the background so what you can do now is um you hit enter 
What I also need to do is I want to duplicate the background so that I can work on that layer instead of on the backdrop layer. So just Command J or Control J if you are on a PC. So and then what you do is you drag this background layer on top of the skinny backdrop. Then what you do is you go to this um, um, quick selection tool so you can click on any of these three options so I'm just on quick selection quick selection tool and then you can choose either select subject or select and mask I personally like to choose select and mask that just gives you a bit more control and then select on mask mask is very important I find to drop the skinny backdrop already onto the layers before you do the select subject so that way by the time I hit select subject the magic button <laughs> you I hit the select subject you can just already already visually tell um, how it's gonna look on top of this um, the, the backdrop behind her the reason why I like to go into this like uh, uh, interface is that there's a way more options and control you can do so there's refined hair so you can choose the refined hair and then there's also color aware and object aware so these two sometimes I, I uh, toggle between those two because um depends on the the, the tone of the image sometimes color aware uh, gives me a much better result I'm not too sure if you can see the difference so you can see there's a little bit difference around her hair so now it's on um, object aware and then if you hit color aware sometimes it blends in much nicer and then of course you can choose the radius you can choose smooth feather and all that depending on the image and then you can also just click on refine hair so you can see that gives you that just change even more um, this one I don't feel like we need a refine hair I think this one I am going to keep color aware I just feel like it blends in a little bit better so there's other tools on the left hand side you have your refined edge brush tool that you can use too but this one I think is pretty good and then I will just hit OK now we're back to the main uh, layers and then the model is selected and just you just hit the the um, the mask so now she's on top of the backdrop so once you are here there's a few things we need to consider um, one one is okay you can see the backdrop it still looks a bit too bright so what I need to do is I need to drop the exposure down a bit so just on the backdrop layer so now what I do is I hit levels either levels or curves and it's just like a personal preference so I use levels and now what I need to do is I just make it a bit darker I drag the the slider a bit more to the right side and then maybe I, I, I drop uh, I drop the highlight just a tiny bit too so that way it blends in a lot nicer so the other thing what you can play with uh, so this one now is this one just make sure this level layer is on top of the backdrop is not on top of the model layer um, so that way you only affects the um, the backdrop layer so the other thing what you can also do is that there's all sorts of blending options uh, over here so you can play with the blending option of the backdrop so it depends so if you find something that you really like like uh, um, you can obviously change to those but um, sometimes I would rather play I would rather choose uh, the the uh, digital backdrop that I like on the design and on the color tone and on the exposure first before I play with the blending mode because if you choose a white backdrop it just might not blend well regardless what you do and then plays uh, play with your levels layer to adjust the exposure on the skinny backdrop so that's step one okay so now step two we want to match the shadowing um, around the skinny backdrop so to hopefully create a similar look like the you can see the real um, canvas behind her so let's do that so what you can do is simply click on the 
the um, the backdrop layer. So double click, double click, and then we're not. Uh, so this um, layer style uh, window is going to pop out. What you can do is you click on drop shadow. So this one. You can see this one that gives you this fake shadow effect, and which will make the the digital backdrop look way more realistic. But just keep in mind that um, to pay attention to where are the shadows and where remember how they are how they should fall onto the background. So you can see now the shadows we have on the left side and the bottom part. And there's nothing on this side. So what you can do is you can simply drag the angle. Not too sure you can see the difference. So it's like a shifting the direction. So now we want the shadow to be on the bottom and on the right side. Let's just keep tweaking a bit more. All right. So now, so the capacity it depends. You can see that's like a not much, and that's a lot. So darker backdrops, you might need to have a, like a higher um, opacity, just like you can see on the right side, the real canvas you can see is quite dark. If I have the opacity quite low and you don't see it, so okay, so you just drag this until it makes sense. And then you have your distance distance to play with that just that controls how far away the shadows, uh, they are from the canvas and remember so the um, the stronger the light and then the and depends on the where the position of the light so if for example if I have the light quite further away from the the model the shadow will uh, be a bit further away from the canvas too so the distance and then the closer the light is to your model the drop off would it, should be like a more contrasty and stronger and the distance should be closer so that just so just uh, another thing to keep in mind and the spread you can play with, uh, with the spread as well you can see that's like a, that's way too much so normally you don't need that much just a little bit and then the size and then again just drag it until you make sense okay so I'll just show you the before and after so this is um, after this is before so you can see you I don't even need to do the before and after you can just compare this um, backdrop versus my real backdrop you can see the similarity and you can see the um how convincing it is it's, it's pretty good so if not well, unless somebody telling me okay this is a fake backdrop I, I wouldn't notice and on top of that you can see this because this set they are converted from our real canvases some canvases they you can still this little curl up uh, effect at the bottom of the backdrop which make um, makes it even more realistic so that's that one okay so another step which I find is essential uh, is that let's get rid of that for now you can see naturally this side is a bit brighter than this side so you can see there's a little bit of a, a shadow on the backdrop I'm not too sure if that's from the model or is that's just the natural uh, the fall off of the lighting lighting you can see there's a little bit of a shadow right here around her body just uh, falling off on the backdrop so and then here is a bit darker too so what we need to do is like we want to mimic that effect typically what i do is i would just create um another like levels layer i'll just drop the uh drop the, the mid tone and then drop a little bit of the highlight so and then i invert the mask um command I or control I if you're using PC and then I would just use a big soft brush so that one maybe let's do 20% opacity so that way hardness uh, make sure it's soft so hardness is zero and I'll have a big brush let's just quickly brush it a tiny bit and then around the model let me drag this 
to under the, the model layer. So that way you can see now it's just a bit more like realistic. So that's one little trick that you can do. Um, the reason why if you, ha if you haven't been working with dig uh, digital templates um, uh, for a long time, the skinny ones are the easiest to use because you don't have to worry about the shadowing on the backdrop, like on the big backdrop. So you can see there's shadows, there's shadows, so you don't have to worry about that. You can keep all of these. So you, you, can, you only have this part to worry about. And then the other thing sometimes I do, it depends on uh, it depends on the digital backdrop you choose, how close the tone is to your backdrop. And sometimes I find the blending could be a little bit hard. Normally what I can do is I go back to the model layer and then I use this, um, uh, I use a soft brush 10% and then I will just soften the, the mask a little bit. So that way the model can blend with the, uh, the backdrop a little bit more too. So you can see if I do this, that just make it way more realistic than um, not doing it because sometimes the problem with the, the composite is that you have this really cut out look. So it just doesn't look, it blends in all that much. Sometimes if that's the case, I will just slightly do this and that's gonna ensure that the model blends in a bit better. And one, I don't, I'm not too sure if you guys noticed. I'm just being like really picky, okay? So I am like really zooming in to 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 um to look at the result. If you if you don't like if you give this to the client, they wouldn't be able to tell. So it looks fine. Uh, you know what I? You know, on top. I want to make sure I still see the the gold. I want to bring out the gold a bit more. So the other thing, I'm just being really picky okay so if you really feel like okay well i wanted this look a hundred percent realistic what you also need to do is that you can see the the sharpness might not match you can see the model around the hair and the backdrop the backdrop is just a bit too sharp so if that's the case what you can do is you go back to the um the the backdrop layer and that's what I need to do is, because it's a smart object, what I need to do is I need to rasterize layer so that way you can blur the, the layer. And now I go to filter and then blur. Now lens blur is showing. So click on lens blur. You only just need the tiniest bit so you can see you can change the radius. If I drag this, this is going to be really blurry. Okay, so now just drop the radius to maybe five, depending on the image. And now that one is blurred. So now if I go in, you can see it blends in beautifully. So the model is, um, uh, the, the softness is so much, like the softness, uh, the sharpness of the model between the sharpness and the, uh, the sharpness of the backdrop, it makes more sense now. You can see even my real canvas backdrop, how soft it is comparing to this one. So you can see that's where you really wanna pay attention if you wanna um, <laughs> do that one more step. Most of the time I wouldn't be bothered. So I'm just showing you the whole step-by-step, -step, um, all the things you can think of when it comes to placing a digital backdrop onto your um, onto your real backdrop. So I will do one more, uh, you know what, uh, let's just disable this layer. What I do is I quickly, once you, uh, once you have masked the model out, you can do is you can just quickly change and uh, try a few other layers and other uh, digital backdrops and see um, if you like the other look better. So for example, like this one, let's just bring this up to where you want the flower uh, to go around the model. And then I think maybe just over here. Now, what I do is, uh, th this is a smart object. Object. I'm just gonna right click and then click on rasterize layer. What I do is I will cut a chunk out of it because I want the two backdrops 
to layer on top of each other. So this one, I'll just have it a little bit shorter. I'll get rid of that. And now double click, click on your drop shadow. So that's already uh, the, the settings already there. I don't need to worry about that. So, and, uh, and then I will, you know what, if anything, I am going to, um, you can see this side is lighter, this side is darker. If anything, I want to uh, flip the image. So I want to go to transform. So you go to edit, transform, and then flip horizontal. So, so that way the lighter side uh, is on the left. So that way it matches my lighting. So, and now what you can do, let's go have a look if I want to soften the image. So that's that. Um, I am going to click on filter, blur, lens blur, and then hit OK. Um, I think that's pretty good. Uh, let's have a look. All right. So I think that looks good. So then you can go back and forth and see if you like the skinny one better or if you like the, um, uh, the floral one better. So that's this, uh, the gold one. And then uh, that's, the, uh, that's the gold one. And then that's the floral one. All right, so if anything, what I need to do is I want to, I want to show you guys a lighter color uh, backdrop and to see uh, if there's any difference. So I'm going to open this image up. So that one, the model was shot on um, just the white seamless paper. So same steps, duplicate the layer and then drop your, um, drop your uh, skinny backdrop. So I'm going to use this one. Then I drop the opacity until I can see where I'm putting the backdrop. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Maybe there. All right. So now rasterize the layer and then I can crop it out a bit. So just pay attention. You can see that area. That's where uh, the shadows are. So I want the backdrop to go on top of that. So uh, above that. So I'm just going to crop this out until here. So delete. Now I drag the backdrop layer under the model layer and then uh, increase the opacity to 100%. Now go back to the model layer and click on the selection tool and then select and mask over here and then click on select subject. See, that's super easy. Okay, so once you have done that, quickly tweak color aware. Okay, so I think this one. Okay, I think at this one I prefer the, um, the object aware. And then let's have a look at refine hair. Okay, refine hair, that looks really good too. Okay, okay, I think that looks good. Let's go back. So hit OK and add the mask on that layer. So now we have that. So there's some imperfections I only just noticed here. Uh, you could have done it uh, in Select and Mask to mask it out uh, within that interface. So here, but if, I, if you have like little spots that you missed, you can just simply go, go to that mask and use a uh, white brush, 100%. Just You can just quickly fix that. That looks really good, I feel like that. Like the hair uh, was mask, masked out beautifully. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, let's drop. All right. So that looks good and now I double click on the backdrop layer and add drop shadow and change the angle to the right side. So you can see the opacity on 85%, that's way too dark for this backdrop. Okay, so, 
So spread size, then opacity, let's drop that. Let's drop that, and then the distance, tiny bit closer. Okay, so that looks good. You can see uh, that blends in really well. And then again, if you want to just soften the model ever so slightly, uh, click on the brush tool and then just a 10% opacity, just to like a tiny bit around the model. No, that's 100%. <laughs> Make sure it's like low opacity. Let's do that. Let's have a look. Just like that, tiny little bit. So that it blends in a little bit better. All right, now we add a little bit of shadowing around the model and then uh, click levels and then drag it under the model, uh, drag it under the model layer. And I'm just gonna drag the, the slider, highlight and mid tone, you invert the layer, a big soft brush, just a 20%. Let's just do it around the model a little bit. So that looks good. Sometimes uh, what I also find is that if you want to have this like soft, um, like a more blended look, what I also do is I um, just create an empty layer over here and then pick on a like, like soft color. So it depends on the, the backdrop color. So if I have a, a tan or beige sort of a tone normally i just would choose something more slightly warmer like a, a really soft yellow things like that uh, so if this one this one is just like a grayish white background i'm just going to choose like a white color uh like a uh, like a bright light color and then i use a massive big brush and then low opacity maybe 10 to 20 percent and then i will just brush onto the backdrop All over uh, over the model as well and then I will just use a you can add a mask uh, and then just uh, erase out the model a little bit not so much normally I start from like a 20 uh, 20 30 percent I will just want to uh, erase the model out a tiny bit so that way sometimes it gives this soft um, overall uh, better blending between this backdrop and the backdrop behind it so that's that I am going to show you guys the before and after. So this is after and this is before. So after and before. Maybe I can brush out the model a tiny bit more. All right, so that's that one. And then, then it's easy that you can just like uh, try some other uh, backdrops and, and see if you like the other one better, so that one, maybe let's put it here. Rasterize layer, get rid of a, a chunk, bring it. Um, Bring it over here. Let's remove this for now. Make sure opacity 100%. Double click, click on drop shadow, and there you go. So now we can see, okay, do I like this one better or do I like this one better? 
I love the florals. I always love the florals. So it's such a like a fun way to play with your images and then to add some like fun elements to your gallery. And then I'm sure the clients will love that. So that's that. So that's beautiful. I love that too. I just love that little bit of um, the gold. And the other thing uh, I want to mention is the model. Make sure you edit your model normally how you want to edit. So this one's like already done editing. So this is just like added uh, element to uh, to the image to have the, fi the, the final touch. All right, so that's that one. Uh, I think I have some other images I want to to show you guys, but uh, what I do is I'll, I'll, I'll um, tape separate tutorials. Um, the um, the bigger backdrops and um, they are a bit more trickier, but the same steps we just need to uh, keep in mind on the um, on the the shadowing on the floor a little bit more around the uh, the, the the model. So I will do a, a separate tutorial for the the full backdrops. All right, so if you have any questions, tag me on Facebook and uh, join the group. So make sure you join the group with them um, or other photographers. There's over 10,000 members in the group. Uh, join the group and then you can find more of the backdrops uh, on Etsy. Um, I'll drop the link in the comments and then, um, um, yeah, so just uh, join the group and let us know how you go.